fell in love with Dean's car and Mondello. Um, so it's James Dean inspired? I like yeah, that. And then he opened the bonnet and seen there's an SR20 and I was like, nah, I can do one better than that. <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to a brand new episode of the Drift Games Vlog. And I've got something special for you guys because we've been running this new championship. It's called the Drift Games Nationals, brought to you by Link Engine Management. And it's thrown up some really interesting battles, matchups, but also some cars. And one car has stood out to us more than the rest. It's an RX-7 and we love RX-7s here at Drift Games. And we decided ahead of round three of the championship to check it out. What's up, Nathan? How are you? Good, what's up? I'm fantastic. Because we spotted this car at round one of the championship and I said, you know, we're gonna have to get a closer look at this. We don't see too many of these in drifting. I think there's only two in Ireland drift cars. James Dean has the other one, which is big boots to fill on the other side. But this is your RX-7 powered by a 2JZ. Yeah. And even his is, is not 2JZ, he's an SR20 in his. So why, okay, let's roll all the way back. Talk us through. Why the RX-7, why a 2J? Why this level of build? Um, well, fell in love with Dean's car and Mondello. Um, so it's James Dean inspired? I like yeah, that. And then he opened the bonnet and seen there's an SR20 and I was like, nah, I can do one better than that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got a heartache and a lot of head scratching and pulled it together. Let's start at the front. So we've got a Rocket Bunny body kit on there, but we don't have a Rocket Bunny front on the car, which I quite like because it's a little bit more so durable. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look the same as all the rest. And I really like the front end of these, especially with the standard bumper and splitter. So that's been kind of retained across the front. What color is the car? She's Honda Type R Blue. The Honda Type R Blue. So this is the kind of color you'd see on a DC5. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. A really nice tram racing wheels all around. And Difficult kit to fit, you gotta cut a lot of the car out. Uh, we uh, cut um, about half of the back quarter panel out and about two thirds of the front arch out. Um, but it's been pretty easy to fit. Um, just been pop riveted on. Spent a bit of time to try and get lanes in that right, but it's a duff car at the end of the day, so we're only gonna stay right. Well, that's the long. thing, you can't get too carried away with the looks of a car with no. a drift car. Talk us through the engine setup on this. 2JZ sitting pretty snug to the bulkhead, to be honest. Like this is a pretty small engine bay. Because originally the rotary is it's probably the smallest engine you can ever find in a performance car. Now you've got to throw in a lot of cylinders. Well, ideally push it back as far back to the bulkhead as you can for width. Um, that is like touching the bulkhead there, which is impressive. Yeah, it, it literally doesn't move when you go to take the gearbox right to the gearbox comes straight back. Wow. Um, and, and again, with regulations, you can't, can't, alter, you can't the put the engine back further than the bulkhead, so yeah. this is as good as it gets. But that, it's kind of sitting quite low, though, so yeah, it, it's not bad. Cu custom mounts and custom subframe to get the engine um, there again as low as we can for center of gravity. Um, having forged this one, just put an external water pump. Um, it's a pretty fancy intake as well. Yeah, just uh, it's a Mad Cat Industries coming from New Zealand. Um, slightly better flow than most others. Um, and six I think six-piece manifold. Six-piece manifold, so it's got a nice rasp out of it. They always make a very good sound. And what was the suspension on the front? So RX-7 suspension, did you go with a conventional lock kit for it or did you something you made yourself? Um, well, because it's been a budget build, um, it was just ordinary BC coilovers, standard hubs, um, and then the grinder and the welder. So we, we were on the cut hubs, I like that. We don't see too many of those. The last couple of cars have been kind of over top, but the cut hubs work fine. And I mean, a lot of people say the RX-7 has pretty good lock as it is. They swap the RX-7 rack into like other, any other Mazda, I suppose, drift car, even the RX-8s, they always put the RX-7 rack in. So now, do you find it's okay for lock? Uh, it's, it's been good, really good so far. Um, I had to space down my track at the end to stop bump steer. Um, but apart from that now, it's been, it's been very good. I've been very happy with it. And Let's have a quick look on the inside. Now this is one of the more difficult parts of an RX-7 for, let's just say, larger people. 
Yeah. So basically, if you're not a child, it's difficult <laughs> to fit in an RX-7 drift car. And this, to me, also looks like I mean, when we've got the seats, you're, you, these have to be custom made, right? Yeah, I had to get the seats custom made in Portugal um, because I couldn't physically get any seat that would fit me in the car. The only other way I could fit in the car was sit on the floor pan. There was nothing on so. The, and that's the thing. They're, they're not that big inside. There's, like from my perspective, you're that's as far back as you can go. And but you fit in it okay now, which is not too yeah, bad. It looks fine now. It's pretty, I suppose. Industrial is the right word, or functional is the right word on the inside. Cheap and cheerful. Yeah, everything you need and nothing more than you. And I quite like that because this is a car for the drift games nationals. You know, yeah. this isn't Formula Drift. You're building a car that's functional, and you'd normally want to go the very conventional way of doing an S body. But I quite like that you've taken the risk to go with an RX7, which. Let's be honest, this is the coolest looking of all drift cars. We all just wanted something cheap and cheerful and reliable. Something that put the heart back into it again and really get me focused. And this car, you think, from your perspective, can be competitive? Oh, there's no reason why it couldn't be competitive. It's, um, at the end of the day, it's all down to the driver. And you say a budget build on this. Is it budget as in your budget, or do you think anybody could kind of... This is a, a fairly simple build to do. Anybody could build a car at that level if they put their mind to it. Um, it's a little bit about research and quite a lot about how much do you really want it. Yeah. If you, re if you really want it, you can have it. And the thing is, RX-7s are expensive now, but the shells and stuff aren't so much because people have kind of taken the parts they needed off them. And no, you'll quite easily pick up an RX-7 shell for as little if not less than the likes of an S14 or 15 shell. See, that's getting me thinking now, and probably a lot of people watching at home going, well, why would I build an S14? And there's a little bit more work, don't get me wrong, in making it work, because everything doesn't fit off the shelf. The yeah, part is a little bit harder to buy for, but if you can't buy it, make it. That's the thing. If you're a little bit handy with the tools, yeah. you can make it. No, I, really, I really, really like the build. I think, you know what, it's very functional. And at this level of competition, that's the whole point, right? It's not, you know, this is not the highest level. But again, it's something that you can grow with over time. You can improve as you go along. You can change little things as you go along. And what's it like to drive? Do you think it's... She's very snappy, um, especially in the dry. So, um, in the dry now, she's very snappy. She has a handful. But they say we like a challenge, and that's what she is. See, I know that James Dean has said in the past that his favourite car to drive is the RX-7 because it's the hardest car to drive. It's more rewarding when it goes right because you know how easily it can go wrong. And I yeah. think that's what RX-7s along... I mean, that's why they're not the most popular choice. Anybody can get on and drive a car that's easy to drive, but get on and challenge yourself and... I think that's a, that's a big part of it, and I think especially in the drift games nationals, it's more about you against the car, you against the track, but learning new things and again trying to climb up the ranks, but in your own way, put your own stamp on it, not just have the same car as everybody else. Yeah, you just want someone to stand out. Um, well, this definitely does stand out, and that's why we are here filming it because when this rolled in, we were like, I'll be honest, the first time I saw it in the paddock, I thought someone had come in in a very nice road car. I thought, ah, someone's a really nice road car. Then I saw there was a roll cage, and I went. This thing isn't competing in amateur leagues in Ireland. And we were right, it was indeed. Well, this is an amazing car. I really, really like all the details. And thank you very much for showing us around, Nathan. That's, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. It's Nathan and his awesome RX-7. So there you have it, guys. Another incredible, incredible build in Ireland. And I really like this one because it's not over the top. It's affordable, but it's still got a lot of imagination put in there. And I can't wait to see this thing rip around the tracks of Ireland for the next couple of years. This episode was brought to you by the guys at Funk Motorsport Heat Management Specialists. If you want to keep your drift car cool, we'll get in touch with those guys. They have some incredible turbo blankets. They've got some heat reflective tape. They've got everything you could possibly need to keep one of these machines cool. And of course, they're great supporters of drift games. So hit them up, check them out. That's funkmotorsport.com. If you enjoyed this episode, if you want us to check out some more cool builds from the Drift Games Nationals or the Drift Games Extreme, let us know in the comments below. And make sure you hit that subscription button. It means a lot to us. Make sure you hit the notification bell on so that we can be reminding you every time we've got a new video or something cool like this to show you. Until the next episode, we'll see you then.